When I listen to Brian Eno's The Drop Now, initially released in 1997, I think of a few things. It makes me initially think of that world where an, an album like The Drop could be released. It, it's coming from a place of optimism and hope for the future and current trends. And it's almost assuming that, oh, we're going to be thinking about new ways of appreciating music, new ways of living. Everything's going to be lucid in the 21st century. We'll be, we'll be seeing around corners. Eno was the great futurist. It, he, he, his positive imagination has had a lot to do with the collective positivity that was felt in parts of the, maybe more privileged parts of the English-speaking world at the turn of the millennium, you know. Eno contributing the, the sounds to um, the early Windows uh, operating systems the, the, this helped really instill that sense of, you know, that aesthetic, you know, possibly informed by his own sort of um, championing of a minimalist style throughout his, the, the visual art of his, of his, his you know, obviously he's a recording artist, although there's been a lot of visual supplements to Eno's work, considering he is known as a recording artist. What we have is, with the drop, it's probably my, probably my favourite of the Eno releases of the 90s. I don't think his 90s albums are considered major classics necessarily. I don't think they were at the time. Some probably are like now, like NerveNet perhaps. NerveNet is good. I do really love the drop though because to me, when I really enjoy the music on it, I, it it's very indicative. It's possibly a bit pastiche. If you've listened to everything available in electronic music in the UK, even just that one nation in the 1990s, and a lot of the innovation was coming from there, to be fair. So, not solely, but uh, just the resources were there. The, the economy, the, the population, the, it was just, it was grand. It was a great soup of, of, of imagination and innovation in music recording technology there at that time. And maybe Eno's experiments can be seen as, you know, some older fellow trying to, you know, do his own spin on a younger person's game. And I, I find it incredibly... I love the um, the willingness and the kind of sincerity of, of Eno's experiments here. I love how much he, how enthusiastic he appears about about current trends. It, he's he may be a dinosaur, but he doesn't wish to be. He wishes to embrace the progress of time, human exceptionalism. And they wouldn't have called it human exceptionalism, but that's kind of what it was, this sort of optimism. I mean, human exceptionalism has, you know, associations with, you know, uglier things like certain national exceptionalisms from Britain to America, uh, German, Japanese, you know, just ugly things in history, essentially, obviously. And so what we still had, though, at that time was a sort of, it was a humanist exceptionalism. We thought it, we could do no wrong. We thought we could even, even though the species has, you know, let up fossil fuels and then climate change is a thing. And I guess they weren't talking about that quite as much in the 90s, perhaps, as they were in the 2000s onward. But, but what we had instead was a world where in the 2020s, it became very apparent that human beings just p p putting the foot on the accelerator, that, that's just not viable. Like, we didn't naturally just come up with a solution to fossil fuels organically. This is still a huge issue affecting everyone, presumably. Unless there are miracles going on in the in the scientific world, in laboratories here and there, curing diseases and or finding free energy that we just don't hear about because the media makes more money trying to scare us. I hope that's the case, honestly. Otherwise, it seems as though the 21st century isn't as exciting, lucid, peaceful and lovely as Brian Eno would have wanted us to believe it could be. I believe it still has the potential, and it's very easy to get kind of binary and blame a few different sources for this. Oh, it's it's this country. Oh, it's it's this way of economics. Oh, it, it's it's this ideology. And and like the fact is, like it's a part of me wishes it was that easy. I do ultimately think that there's a while I'm not I'm not an absolute you know godless human being. Not one hundred and one percent anyway. Although I, I do think that we have to take into account that, you know, what if we're ultimately living in chaotic materialism? Let's say we are. There's no reason to assume that our, our species is, has any uh, real potential to it that, that, you know, chimpanzees don't, for example. I mean, chimpanzees have some potential, but they also go to war with each other. It's not as though we as a species have attained something uniquely enlightened i mean there's this barbarity going on in even the parts of the world considered civilized and so here's the thing 
It might be that Robert Howard's view of history is more accurate to what was going on in human affairs throughout the centuries than anything which, you know, someone like an Eno or some other Rousseau-esque figure, why not name drop that? Old university nonsense, not nonsense, it's kind of interesting. Um, there's this, this sort of world where we think, oh, like our species has been corrupted, you know. It's the kind of thing that people like, even kind of loonies, if I may be uh, polite, I guess, or slightly impolite, but as polite as possible in, 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 in any instance, you know, some silly David Icke stuff where he's going, you know, oh, yeah, our species did so much potential, what happened? We got corrupted by, you know, reptilians or whatever. And I just don't know how many explanations for why our species isn't, you know, achieving its potential. I don't know if any of them can amount to much more than conspiracy theory claptrap, because we have to at least assume that it's possible that the world is governed by absolute chaotic materialism, and that any faith in our species from kind of secular humanists does come across as a very much... A kind of leap of faith, the thing that they would disdain the religious for. I hope that's not the case, but sometimes I'm concerned that it is the case because theoretically, if, if you did have faith in the species, like in the year 2000, 1997, where are, you know, did, does 2023 look like you wanted it to look like? I don't know, probably not. So what do we do about that? Why do we feel so nostalgic for a decade like the 1970s? That wasn't, isn't that seemingly the most tumultuous time in human history? Like, sometimes I, I wasn't alive at all in the 1970s. My, I don't think my, my parents wouldn't have met in the 1970s even. And so why, why would people, why do I know so much about the 70s? It's, it's not because I've, went, I've maybe I've gone out of my way a little bit to view 70s culture and media, but we all know so much about it. Maybe because that enough reruns of that, that television sitcom perhaps, but... What we have is this nostalgia for a decade where clearly things were, were brutal. And I look back in that era and, I, and, and adults do claim about that era as well, I think. And they say, how did anyone survive as a child during that decade? It was just murders. It was a world affairs. Or it was just, it's nuts. The 70s is a crazy, tumultuous time. Described as a bummer by many people at the time. Look back in retrospect, there's a time it's like, yeah, we wish it was things were more like that, you know, in a way. And that's insane to me. But I think I've identified what the factor is. Things were so bad in the 1970s that you couldn't help but just like not give a fuck in a way. That's why they look back on that kind of late 70s punk epoch in the UK so fondly. Or in America, you know, like there, there was no choice but just, you know, out of hell with it, you know. Bill Withers, you know, let's just, you know, funk and all this other kind of happy music. And then the, the disco is more of a kind of a cocaine fueled denial perhaps. But, you know, all the, all the great... um escapism of that decade arose from a feeling of you know what like we can only worry about this this crap so large like let's just kind of like have some sort of zen post 60s way of kind of getting on with it without denying the world you know if there's any use of the 60s it's not changing the world it's finding this sort of way of keeping a, a clear kind of head and you know treating world affairs like a bad trip essentially you know stay calm you know keep cool you know It'll be over soon, hopefully. And if not, hey, let's just try and enjoy the ride while we can. Maybe that's the message of the 20th century, which so many 21st century uh, nostalgic citizens of it, uh, you know, especially those who used to live in it, want from it, even though they're, the reason they can appreciate the prior decade so much is because of 21st century uh, norms like the internet and social media. In any case, Brian Eno, even from now, and I don't like the drop makes me slightly slightly marginally nostalgic or at least uh, fond somewhat of an of a bygone era when we thought the 21st century would be a magnificent time it makes me i guess yeah there's a kind of a juxtaposition here but it's it's kind of oxymoronic there's a nostalgia for a, a, a futurism that doesn't exist anymore because we, we all no longer believe in our species potential Actually, maybe if we stop believing in our species potential, this would be the start of us like actually addressing all of the issues that, that we're going to inevitably cause. I don't know. It seems that people claim that the year 1997 or around this time was a more carefree era and people thought everything would kind of turn out fine in a way, you know, like what, what could go wrong now? The worst of human history is over. 
it's perceived as that in hindsight. Maybe some can come out and dispute how 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 stable and comfortable things really were at that time. Whether it was just a an ugly media sheen for the developed world, possibly. In any case, I think that perhaps it's time to consider that maybe there was no truly comfortable time in history. We look back at, a, oh, the 890s are cozier, oh, the 2000s are cozier. If you're really up to date on world news and affairs, you might think in 2007 or 1996 or any point in history where people claim was a cozier time, you might be like, that wasn't a cozier time. All this stuff was going on in the world and it directly led to all the things that you don't like now. So you can't say 1996 was a cozier time. Maybe you can't say any time in human history was a cozier time. But that's the great thing about a very fine piece of art or this music, this album in this case, music album. It can make you feel like, yeah, everything, I feel so happy right now that everything must have led up perfectly to this moment. Everything must happen for a reason. That's how happy and good this album is making me feel. That's impressive, actually. Good on you, Brian Eno, in making me optimistic. You've, you've done the, you've, you've made me commit something, commit some completely illogical behavior, and that's uh, <laughs> optimism for the species and our species' future. I, 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 bravo, Brian.